Hey there, home labbers and engineers. FE Engineer here. Today we're going to take a look at setting up an ad blocker. And the ad blocker we're going to use is Pi-hole. Now, along with blocking ads, which as you can see on my screen, I have the awesome msn.com website up. But besides blocking ads, another thing that we can do with Pi-hole is set it up to be our own DNS server. And what this means is that when we type in a website such as google.com and hit the enter button, when it goes out and says, where do I find google.com, instead of going to a DNS server like Google or like your internet service provider and saying, hey, I'm looking for google.com, where does it live? Instead, we'll just go straight to our own pie holes and our own pie hole will figure out where google.com lives and return it back to us, meaning that the data since you went and were searching for google.com, that is logged in wherever you go and do your DNS. So if you send it off to Google and use Google as your DNS, their DNS is great, it's really fast, but you are effectively giving them your data of here's everything that I search for. So having your own pie hole blocking ads and becoming your own DNS server is helpful if you want to keep more of your data private and not constantly be getting ads for because you searched for a Jeep, you suddenly get pummeled with ads for car dealerships. You'll still get that quite a bit because DNS is not the only way that they collect data, but this will help to limit it. Let's take a look at what we need to do. A few notes with running potentially your own DNS as well as an ad blocker. The most important thing, never open port 53 to the internet. Never do it. It is something that is attacked constantly and is an easy way to have your network compromised. Do not open port 53 to the internet ever. Along with that, uh, Pi Hole can run on just about anything. It can run on Raspberry Pis, it can run on VMs, it can run on bare metal. Uh, I am simply using an Ubuntu 2204 VM here. Uh, this one actually has a lot more power than what Pi Hole needs. It really only needs one or maybe two cores, you know, and one gig of RAM or two is absolutely plenty. So it's exceedingly light on its requirements. With that, let's take a look at getting started. The first thing we're going to do is install Pi-hole. All the commands will be down in the video description below. Run the installer and let it go through and I'm going to pause the video and we will come back when this is complete. The Pi-hole automated installer comes up. This in installer will transform your device into a network-wide ad blocker. Sounds great. Pi-hole needs a static IP address. The Ubuntu VM that I'm running on currently already has a static IP address. So we are all set. Select upstream DNS. We're going to go with custom. And we're going to use 127.0.0.1. And then the pound sign 5335. This is correct. We do want to include Stephen Black's Unified Host List. This is a really good uh, block list to start with. Yes, we do want to install the admin web interface. Yes, we do want to install Light HTTPD. Yes, we want to install query language or query logging. Privacy mode, since I'm running this on my home lab, I don't mind showing everything. You can choose whatever, whatever option sounds good to you. And then the installer will continue going. 
you'll have a screen that comes up looking like this. 192.168.3.7, that is the IP address of this server for me. Your web, your admin web page login password is whatever this is. Just hit OK. And then the first thing we're going to do is actually change the password. OK, the installation is complete. So now the, the very first thing we're going to do is ignore everything that it told us and set our own password. In order to set up a new password, pihole-a-p and then your password. We'll do 123123. New password has been set. Also, you can just leave, you can in fact use nothing and remove it all so that there is no password. The next thing we're going to do is install Unbound. Unbound is what we're going to be using to actually make DNS queries. Yes, we want to install Unbound. From there, we are going to sudo nano etsy unbound We're going to nano into Etsy unbound unbound conf d pihole.conf. This file should be empty and there will be something to copy down in the video description below. So we're going to copy that. Now that we've changed the configuration for unbound, we do need to restart. sudo service unbound restart. Now that unbound has been restarted, we should be able to actually go and take a look at pihole up and running. And if you type one if you type in just the server page, you will likely either see a default page or you will see a pihole page that says that you're looking for the admin board. So your server's IP slash admin. And since I removed the password, I was not asked for a password and I was simply let it in. We're going to go to settings, go to DNS. You should notice that none of these should be checked. And instead up here on upstream DNS servers, we should have 127001 uh, hashtag 5335. This is going to be our local upstream DNS server using Unbound. After putting in your custom upstream DNS server, you do need to go down and hit save. After that, you may want to consider changing your ad lists. The ad list that it comes pre-enabled with is this Stephen Blacklist, and it is a great one. However, I personally use a couple other ones as well. I will go and go into my actual pie holes that I currently run. And I have a couple other lists set up. Uh, this Adaway Hosts is a great list for ads. This Firebog is a great list for things that are somewhat suspicious. Also, this uh, Firebog Easy Privacy is a good list that disables a lot of trackers. And then this Pihole Whitelist is a good set of whitelisting for things that could come up in these other lists, but actually should be whitelisted because it will effectively disable your ability to do certain things. One of them in particular is the Xbox game client 
is also mixed in with some of these ad lists. So if you or your children or anybody uses Xbox Live, it may stop working if these are the DNS servers used for everything because it may come up as an ad and it may block it. And so this whitelist helps to ensure that a few essential services are actually whitelisted and are not then blocked. Right out of the gate, Pi-hole is actually pretty well set up. So other than adding a few extra ad lists and setting your DNS, one of the last things you may wanna do is on your personal computer, if you go over to the ethernet properties, you can see this internet protocol version four. This is effectively where all of your internet runs through and you can go to properties. And inside of those properties, you can use the following DNS server addresses and change your preferred DNS server to one of your Pi holes and an alternate DNS server to a second Pi hole. In general, if you are running your own Pi holes as DNS servers, you do typically want to set up two of them if you possibly can. This is simply because as you are accessing websites and things like that, a lot of DNS requests may come through in a very short period of time. And if you have multiple people using the internet or computers or TVs or game systems, effectively you can more or less overload a single DNS server and having two of them allows them to load balance quite nicely. Now, another option for some folks who have something like, like a Unify system, what you can do is you can go all the way to your router And on a network, you can, in fact, set the DNS servers that your actual router will use. And you may notice these are the exact same DNS servers that I have running for my Pi holes. So for myself, at least in Unify, I can go to my networks, go to my default network and say that all users on my default network should be using these DNS servers. And so anybody connecting to my default network, if they don't have anything specified, these are the DNS servers that they will use. And now probably my only complaint about the pie hole and ad blocking and that some people on your network may complain about is if you go to google.com and you end up searching for something such as Halloween costumes and you end up with all of these sponsored ads, when you click on them, it will not work. This is because it is effectively an advertisement and it is being blocked by Pi-hole. If you have somebody who is particularly annoyed that they cannot click on the Google ads, Back inside of what we were doing before, we can effectively obtain DNS server addresses automatically. Instead, what you could do is for a specific user, you could just do 8.8.8.8, which is Google, and you could also do 1.1.1.1, which is Cloudflare. And these are probably the best two DNS servers to use outside of, of course, your own pie hole. And if you were to save this, then it would effectively get around your pie hole. It would no longer be using your pie hole and you would see ads and you would also be able to click on Google ads. So along with that, we have in fact set up our own pie hole. Our pie hole is now leveraging our own DNS service using Unbound. We have set up a reasonable number of both block lists as well as a white list to ensure that things like Xbox Live and Xbox Game Services continue to run as normal. We have also gone through setting up your own home network or your router to automatically use your own pie holes as their DNS 
And so new users who connect to your network will automatically pick these up and use these as your DNS. I think that's it for today. Thanks. One other thing to note is that your Pi-holes are like any other service and you can in fact access them through a reverse proxy in something like Apache. And so if we take a look at our SSL setup, you will see that in Apache, we have this proxy pass and proxy pass reverse inside of our virtual host file for Apache. And that allows us to access our pie holes from a friendly domain name and makes them accessible easily. Thank you so much for watching my videos, home labbers and engineers. I create and edit all of these videos on my own, so any likes and subscribes will massively help out the channel and allow me to continue creating content to help people. If you got value out of this, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel to be notified when new content drops. If there's something I've not covered but you would like to see a video on it, please leave a comment down below. And again, a massive thank you to everyone. I hope you have a great day.